Apologies for starting late. So welcome for the webinar, Cloud Management Made Easier with DSL Smart Price Cloud Manager. The speaker for today's session is Navin Noyen, Senior Enterprise Solution Architect, IDLR, the R&D Division of DSL. Navin will discuss on how DSL Smart Price Cloud Manager deliver, delivers a unified approach and makes cloud management easier. During the presentation, all participants will be muted. You can submit your questions on the right hand side of your screen using the chat window. We will answer some of the questions during the Q&A session that follows the presentation and answer any remaining questions offline. The today's presentation will be recorded and posted at CSL's TV and webinar page. With that, I would like to turn the presentation over to Naveen. Welcome, Naveen. Thanks, Sugalia. Um, I'm Naveen Noel, a senior social architect of uh, CSL. Um, today, I'm discussing about uh, cloud computing, uh, uh, basically how management made easier with DSL Smart Price Cloud Manager. The session objectives, I um, will discuss briefly about DSL, um, explore clear definition for cloud computing, the market landscape, uh, cloud management, introduction and challenges, and the scenario, the scenario which we discussed, and uh, DSL Smart Price Cloud Manager. And uh, at the end of it, we uh, discuss about Smart Price Cloud Services offered by DSL. So my role is DSL. I work out of Edison, New Jersey. I have the enterprise uh, computing practice. Uh, I handle cloud computing um, um, free sales, technical support and projects, engage current clients and get new clients, help uh, businesses to um, power cloud computing and embrace cloud computing. Working with cloud, with cloud computing since early 2007. The company overview, uh, DSL is a 15 plus years old global technology integrator. Uh, headquartered uh, at Edison, New Jersey. We've got offices um, and development uh, centers in US, Canada, and India, and offices in UK, uh, France, Canada, Germany, Malaysia, Singapore, uh, the Middle East. So we have a dedicated R&D division to offer these value added and product development uh, services. Um, 100 member development uh, R&D team is available. We have totally 4,000 plus employees uh, worldwide. We specialize, the R&D division also specializes in emerging technologies uh, with leading technology vendors in alignment like Oracle, IBM, um, Microsoft, and all these big companies. We pioneer industry solutions, development, insurance, finance, e-governance, pharmaceuticals, telecom, consumer electronics, these are the industries we focus on. Each team focuses on individual, um, uh, each of these work. We have award-winning and proven partnerships to get back together and ISPs, VARs, uh, SPs and ISIs. We have more than 100 partnerships uh, built up. Uh, we are SEO, ISO and, and CM certified solution provider. Um, so our company is certainly certified. So let's, let's jump right straight into what is cloud computing. Uh, I just want to go very uh, briefly and very quickly on these slides because our main focus is cloud management. Uh, not cloud computing, so cloud management is something about cloud computing. So, so National Institute of Standards and Technology. They say cloud computing is a model for enabling convenient on-demand network access to shared pool of configurable computing resources, for example, network storage application services that can be rapidly provisioned and released with minimum management effort or service provider interaction. In simple words, it's a flexible hosted resource pool delivered on the internet. So everything is virtualized on the internet. Uh, you want storage, you want networks, you want any type of service which you see in IT, you can actually put it out from cloud, in the cloud which is all virtualized. So essential characteristics um, of cloud computing, the on-demand self-service, the ability to use minimal intervention from the provider. Um, you have broader network access of services because it's all virtualized. Um, Internet uh, resource pools on demand like compute, memory, and storage. So, you uh, say I want uh, computing power or memory power or storage, you just specify what you need, and you're within a minute you are given access to that specific pool. Elasticity you can scale up, down, out, and in. So, you can vertically, vertically scale, horizontal scale, increase, for example, increase the CPU on the flight, uh, increase your RAM, stay from 4GB to 8GB and CPU say from 4 cores to 8 cores on the fly with matter of minutes you scale up vertically. You can also scale out horizontally by adding new nodes, new worker nodes to the cluster and load balance them. 
So all this is done uh, through software. So measure service, you have meter, usage, and billing. So everything is metered and billed. So pay for what you use, basically. So there you go. Uh, you use one hour, you consume one hour, you pay for one hour. You uh, consume for 10 hours, pay for 10 hours. So if you don't use these resources, you do not pay. So multi-tenant, usually you share applications with multiple users. Um, so um, this is kind of a SaaS platform, so one of the characters of cloud computing. So not all cloud applications, of course, that have this multi-tenant nature. So different types of cloud deployments, you have the public, the private, the hybrid, and the community. So the public cloud is external. Um, multi-tenant, it is self-provisioned and um, offered by a vendor. It's available to everybody. Um, uh, examples are like Amazon, Rackspace, uh, Microsoft. These are all uh, public cloud providers. Uh, the private cloud providers, the internal or external uh, premises, actually, uh, what it means is you install the cloud inside your organization or you install the cloud on the data center. So in the private cloud, you have to take care of your infrastructure and the cloud computing software itself. So if you want to install it on a data center or in the organization, you can actually leverage the cloud capability. But you need to take care of the hardware, the software, everything over the cloud. The hybrid cloud is a combination of the above. Uh, some resources are pulled from the public, some resources are used for the private. Like for example, external facing websites, um, which require heavy load, is a typical candidate for the public cloud. So databases, for example, yeah, uh, could be uh, candidates for private cloud because of data security. Public clouds, people say, um, we don't know where the data is, so we need to be Secure. We need to know where the data is physically. So in that case, you will go for a um, private cloud. And you link up the private and the public, and you call that hybrid. Community cloud, a cloud infrastructure typically shared with the, among organizations for mutual benefit. It's nothing but a public cloud, given the virtual private, uh, link a virtual private cloud on the public cloud. Um, and organizations from different parts of the world sharing common interests share that specific cloud. The cloud is only open to certain organizations, and people are the, and the resources who are given access are selected, and selected resources are given access, basically. So let's see the time shift in cloud computing. Let's go from demographics and see what's going on in cloud computing. So we can see this. Uh, traditional data centers, the cloud computing, public, public and private, and the option of the from 2000 to 2010, you can see the shift going towards cloud computing. Um, because everything is virtualized, it's cheap, it's on demand, so it all benefits what we discussed. The traditional data centers are actually converting themselves to either cloud models. Um, most of the data centers currently are virtualized, so now they're converting them into cloud models. The cloud adoption rates, uh, um, this is a first report taken in uh, 2009. Expect, expect to grow with these numbers. So you can see how that option is going up. SA is fast, the software as a service, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and uh, this is as a service. So you can see how all these um, uh, option curves going up. Uh, whether it's SAS or IAS or PAS, it, yeah, it's just increasing. The top drivers for cloud products um, are basically um, cost reduction, time to market, flexibility, Reduce complexity in consolidation. Uh, so um, this, this basically means that uh, the main driver for cloud is cost. Um, so most of our clients actually, when they speak to us, they come uh, with a cost perspective. Uh, that is very true. They say we want to reduce our cost drastically. So apart from that, all the sales and business associated with cloud computing and the benefits of cloud computing. And the time to market is second. Um, the flexibility and scalability. There are many clients actually who I would think it's also a high rate. Personally, they want to scale up. They want to scale down. They want to be more flexible in their resources. They want to share resources. Um, that's also one of the major benefits. Um, to reduce complexity. They um, want the cloud to reduce their complexity. Um, I would say cloud computing should be made uh, should be easier for users to use, but it's not that easy for users to use and users to use. That's why we as partners come in and help you out um, 
it, it is a little difficult to configure and maintain the entire cloud, but once you know how to do it, it's, you can leverage a lot of benefits from the cloud. And uh, consolidation of services. So that is actually a very important feature of growing, like so many clouds are coming up, so all one consolidation of uh, different, different services. This was road, top roadblocks for the, to the cloud. You see the top roadblocks to the cloud? Um, change and learning. That is the main thing, as I said, complexity is <clears throat> it, you have you to change from your traditional data center to the typical cloud environment. So uh, users have to change the way they, they work, the, how, they, how they deal with things. So the learning curve is more. So they are, they are the main roadblocks. Uh, most clients come up and say, yeah, it's, we like the cloud, it's got good benefits, but how, uh, how much learning do we need to have? How much do we need to learn from that? Uh, or what, what should our ID stuff learn? That's the main road, major roadblocks. Complexity, um, cost, security, and the line. So this, this is the, how the, the graph goes. So you can see these two are the major, major roadblocks for complexity and change in learning. So hence, we basically uh, reduce this uh, curve and we remove these roadblocks. So how organizations plan to uh, implement uh, cloud computing? So it's a very self-explanatory slide. I will not go deep into it. Um, but in general, you see developing new applications for the cloud. Virtualization, storage, these are the main top three. And uh, if you see in the whole chart, it's more or less you know, 25 to 11 to 25 percent in that range. So, uh, developing new applications for the cloud, we've got a couple of our clients saying, um, you know, uh, asking us how we develop new applications or, you know, migrate existing, taking existing applications to the cloud. So, how do we do that? Um, most of them say we want to develop new application. Can we cloud enable it right from the very beginning? What's in it for us? So, that's the main major top driver. Um, so, so what is cloud management? So cloud management is a loose term that means the abstraction of infrastructure structure resource tools and delivery of those resources through a standardized design and operational process. To the end user, this means the ability to leverage the infrastructure pool most relevant to a project or environment rather than force fitting an application or service into the infrastructure you already have or have access to. So in other words, Cloud management means providing value-added services on top of users' existing cloud services and empowering users to do so more than is possible from a single cloud vendor. So you have your cloud, you have your uh, cloud services. Cloud management is built on the top of cloud, cloud services. So why do we do that? Why do we build uh, something over the cloud uh, services? As we said, complexity, it is a very complex learning curve is higher. So we need to reduce that. So for end users to accept it, for users to accept it, embrace cloud computing, we need to mitigate that. We need to bring that curve, that, that, that graph down. So the few challenges in uh, cloud management. So the first one is today's IT environment. Legacy processes and policies, tools, and management, they're not cloud-enabled. Cloud so they don't, they're not yet cloud enabled. They do not know how to take it to the cloud. They do not know whether it's actually, um, you know, they can rewrite it, they have to rewrite it, or they can migrate it to the cloud. That's the biggest challenge they, they face. So I'm talking about these legacy applications which are pretty old, like uh, 15, 20 years old, decades old. So written in, uh, in a old uh, technology like COBOL, all these kind of technologies. The second one is multi-clouds. Too many clouds. Each one follows different architectures, APIs, different formats, abstractions, features, network storage, hypervisor, you name it, they are all the same, they mean the same. You, compute means um, processing power, but the way you access that compute is different from each cloud. The APIs are different, the calls are different. So each cloud has its own standard, for example, the AWS, the Amazon cloud, you take the Rackspace, Rackspace cloud, they are totally different APIs. Uh, you take the offsource cloud, they are different APIs, because they have different hypervisors now, so the way the access the hypervisor interacts with the, uh, with, uh, with the APIs are different. So they expose different architectures as well. And to manage these clouds, there are too many tools around in the market. Too many management tools doing the same thing or different things for different clouds and trying to solve the same problem, basically managing the cloud. 
So one does monitoring, one does provisioning, one does orchestration, each of these tools for each of these clouds. So you can just imagine the, the matrix of these, uh, the permutations and combinations of these. You will know, have like probably 50 or 100 tools available in the market to do different things. So what we need is one tool or probably one or two tools, a few tools to manage the whole thing which is easier for us. See, so orchestration of services. So the main challenge is to cobble the best of breed into one unified solution, as I explained. Yeah. So we need all these to be into one. It should be simpler and easier to maintain. The management consoles. Most clouds are set after of API and a simple UI to launch server. These are basic building blocks. So you find that, for example, AWS giving its management console. You have Rackspace giving its own management console, Azure with its own management console, and Opsource and uh, and then name Telemark, GoGrid, all, all these clouds. So they have their own management consoles, but they are basic building blocks. They are not the entire platform as such. And why? We'll explain it in a few minutes. I'll come to that in a few minutes. Not every business friendly, not very business friendly. It needs technical knowledge, yeah. It needs quite some technical knowledge to understand networking. In fact, when we, I also went on to the cloud the first time, I had to learn quite a few things to actually do some things on these management consoles. They're pretty cool, they're pretty nice, very flexible, um, very beautiful pieces of software. But some knowledge is there, some technical knowledge is needed. So don't worry, we are there, that's why we are there. Uh, we come in and you know, help you with this. So the reasons for cloud management. So the automation, cloud-ready solutions, governance and control, portability. So the automation is the main thing. You need to automate, they're not yet uh, cloud-enabled, and cloud-ready solutions, too many management tools doing the same thing, as we explained. Governance, accountability and billing, and um, portability, so you uh, run right on your rest, run everything in the same data center. So this is the main thing. So a cloud, uh, cloud management solution, as I explained, the problems with the cloud, man uh, the, the basis go roadblocks with cloud management. So what does a good cloud management solution uh, have to offer? So it allows users, uh, I just written this very briefly, um, um, just to make you understand this, but um, there are a lot of other uh, reasons why we need to have cloud management solution, uh, cloud management option, a solution over it. So the basic thing is, it should allow users to provision, manage, and control various public clouds, private clouds, or hybrid clouds. Helps ma you manage user security, financial controls, configuration management, so backups and recoveries. It has it's the third thing. The cloud has to be the cloud management has to solution has to be able to uh, uh, take backups. Um, recover uh, from the recovery of backups, automate this whole thing, and seamlessly work without, with less user intervention or manual intervention. So we should also be able to deploy applications with automated scaling, recovery, in one cloud as well as bursting across clouds. Why, why do we need bursting across clouds? Yes, each cloud has uh, its own benefits and advantages, so we can uh, use certain features from certain clouds and uh, cobble these two clouds together together uh, um, a hybrid solution. So, uh, the cloud management solution, uh, software solution, what you build should have the feature to scale across multiple clouds, or first across cloud data, and uh, be able to leverage features from these different clouds. So, uh, it also should protect you from single cloud vendor lock in uh, and allow cross cloud cloud operations and migrations. Like, for example, um, I want to store data on, um, uh, on the cloud. So if I'm using, say, Rackspace or uh, Opsource Cloud and I want to store some data onto Amazon's cloud, or I want to pick some data from Amazon's cloud, or, because, or maybe integrate an application which stores data on the Amazon's cloud, say, for example, S3. So I, this cloud management solution should give you an API or should give you an access to that specific cloud so that you can access that data and bring it into this cloud. So um, uh, uh, I'm just giving you a very, very s a simple example, but there are many examples like this. Um, it should not lock you in into the specific cloud and say, okay, you only have to use uh, Rackspace or Amazon. Um, so that, that's what it means. It should also facilitate disaster recovery and configuration management. Sometimes uh, uh, building highly scalable architectures, uh, I will discuss this in a few minutes. So how, how do you manage the entire architecture? How do you do disaster recovery? How do you fail over, fail back? So um, the cloud management solution should uh, facilitate this. Uh, the cloud uh, solution providers give you the features, they give you the API, they give you the infrastructure. But the solution over it, um, is cloud management uh, um, uh, product or a, man, a tool has to build it over it. So it manages your service level agreements. It takes care of 
uh, when your systems are down, so what are the 9-9s, 11-9s, 5-9s, whatever the service level agreements you have with your cloud provider, it should ensure that that service level agreement is, is met. So if something goes wrong, it should trigger and allow respective um, uh, levels and you take action to the actions. So a typical cloud management solution monitors all this. It should also track um, audits, reports for compliance, um, uh, have, um, you know, um, auditing and reporting for compliance purposes, the cloud management solution should have it. It should also be able to monitor uh, and manage your entire cloud solution to find out what's going on um, and, and the efficiency of utilization also, uh, which uh, resources consuming more uh, uh, or which uh, um, resources underutilized or overutilized. So we need to understand that. So I want to discuss here, take leverage and discuss a scenario, uh, a scalable web um, architecture and application. Um, very briefly, if you look at this um, um, architecture, I have not uh, focused it on a specific cloud. Uh, I have just taken a very general architecture and shown you um, what a typical web app looks like in the cloud, uh, or in general, basically. A typical scalable web app architecture will have a load balancer which balances load across uh, two different zones. Um, so you see the left tier is one zone and the right tier is another zone. So you see two web servers, two web servers. Um, so a load balancer will balance with across these four web servers. So since these two zones, uh, the left and the right, are in different uh, physical data centers, um, um, so you have highly, it's highly available. So one data center goes down, you always have the other one. So um, you can also spread this to, uh, these uh, two data centers across different zones very far apart, like for example, East Coast, US East, and US West. From, for this example, I've just taken US East, uh, make it simpler. But if this goes to USA, for example, the distance is more and it's, and it's out of a specific cloud. Uh, this, uh, considering the fact that it's on the same cloud, on the, say, for example, Amazon's cloud, we have US East, um, Zone A, and Zone B. Basically. Availability zone A, availability zone B. But if you want to go across multiple clouds to have it still more highly available, like Amazon's and the Rackspace cloud, you can also do that. You can have one tier on Amazon's cloud, one tier on Rackspace's cloud, and have the global load balancer doing round robin, DNS round robin, you know, or some some uh, thing like that, and you know uh, split the load up. Um, so all those options are available. For simplicity, I've just taken the same zone. Okay. So the second page, you have a software load balancer. So the web server balances load, and you have the software load balancer, which balances load for the application server. That software load balancer, some cloud providers provide it, um, um, but some do not provide it. So if um, if you need it, you have to use something like HA proxy or some kind of a software load balancer to balance load across the application tier itself. From the application tier, uh, you have uh, data going to the master database. And for the master, you have uh, mirroring or replication to the slave on other than the other zones. So whether it's Oracle, MySQL, uh, SQL Server, or any database, uh, you can basically do mirroring and replication. Databases support that. So uh, set up support replication. And uh, you see the master and the slaves uh, writing to different master snapshots, um, or slave snapshots. That's nothing but a storage on the cloud given to you. So for Amazon, it's equivalent to be uh, EBS, plastic block storage. For also this uh, cloud files, so um, so all these all the cloud providers have that storage facility. So you basically write backups onto this uh, onto those uh, volumes. So you also find the application server and the web server uh, backing up data into another uh, volume. So they do their backups. So just imagine uh, this whole scenario. Keep in front of you, and if you have to implement this on the on the cloud or uh, or validate this scenario and make sure everything goes well, uh, goes as per as well plan. So just, just think about it, if one zone goes down, if one web server goes down, or two web servers go down, or zone goes down itself, total zone goes down, it will automatically balance with the other zone. That's how the architecture is supposed to be built. So you also have you know, the VPN connection from your network to the cloud provider, so to check data, upload data, and uh, interact with the cloud. So this is the whole scenario. So let's understand now what tasks need to be done in order to fulfill this scenario on the cloud. So some tasks are just, I hope you put it down. Um, there are a lot of tasks more than this, but uh, I just put down the few which I remember, which are more important. So you need to provision instances when needed, stop them when not required, 
start, start, all, all those operations. You need to provision storage. You need to do general network management, like configuring ports, blocking access to ports, allowing port access. You need to build the base images for the whole uh, system. If you see the, um, uh, the whole um, uh, uh, the architecture which I showed you just now, each of those web servers and application servers need to have some base images from where we need to boot it up. Boot up. So, um, um, typically it's called basically Amazon machine systems if you talk about the Amazon cloud. So, they are images basically. Um, you need to have, obviously, to back up and restore data. The cloud gives you APIs to basically take snapshots, uh, but you need to take it manually. So, if you want to really automate that process based on your business process, you need to um, uh, build a backup and just to um, um, just to process in your organization. You can also come the load balancers and manage them and tell the load balancers whether it's a simple round robin based load management or basically weighted load balancing. So you need to configure that load balancer. Some clouds provide you with elastic load balancers, some clouds do not. If they do not provide you, you need to implement your own. So you need to auto scale or manually add worker nodes when necessary. So um, if you see the architecture, if one, two nodes go down, or if the node gets, uh, all the four nodes get loaded up, the web server get loaded up, you need to add more to the cluster. So you need to add more to the group. So uh, when you decide to add it, it's basically when you monitor and find out when something goes wrong and when the load is increasing. So you need to add that. So you need to monitor the instance health and act on it. So um, the instance is getting uh, too loaded or uh, it's crashing. There has to be some uh, monitoring system which monitors that and uh, remove unhealthy instances and add healthy instances back or spin up more instances if required. So you need to do cost management, you need to watch your meter and build and see what's going on, how it is running, how much you're paying every hour. You need to configure security of instances. Um, uh, so securing the instances with SSH or uh, you know password security of data, so encryption of data on the on the uh, storages or on the uh, block storage is where you want to put your data, you have to do data, basically security address, uh, you need to do that. Uh, you need to configure and manage the VPN connection between the cloud and the corporate uh, network. So uh, the VPN connection has to be the site-to-site -side VPN, uh, whatever, uh, 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 whatever kind of VPN you need, you need to configure that and maintain that. The cloud provider just do give you facilities to do that, but you need to maintain and manage that. You need to schedule many of the above tasks. So, all these other tasks, you need to basically write some scripts to schedule them and you build an overall solution around it and basically bootstrap things together. So basically creating automation scripts and, um, and most of all, you need to configure and manage the application which you're going to install. If you have an IIS web application running inside, ASP.NET application or you have an Apache application, you need to understand what's going on inside the application. If the instance is health is fine, but the application doesn't perform well for some reason, Somebody has to manage and tell us that like, something is not right. So these are some of the uh, things. So it looks like a whole uh, bundle of things to do. So how do we do this? How do we manage all this? Um, so definitely there, this has been thought a couple of months back or years back as to how do we maintain all this and put all these things together. So what's the solution? So that's when Smart Price Cloud Manager comes in. It's a versatile cloud management solution. That's what we aim to do. So Smart Price Cloud Management uh, Manager. The solution is a software or a, or a software as a service kind of a thing which we give out. It's, it's, nothing can be totally 100% automated. So um, maximum as possible we automate uh, different tasks for you for the cloud. And uh, um, things which are not automated we provide as a service uh, for you because certain things have to be done manually, and that's what we provide as a service, so it comes as a solution. So Smart Place Cloud Manager, what is STM? It's a unified cross-cloud management solution which provisions, configures, orchestrates, and automates, and monitors the cloud, the public cloud. So we fix it onto the public cloud currently, and we move slowly onto the private cloud, and then make it hybrid. So it's, it's not a uh, um, simple task to integrate every cloud everywhere. So we're going face by face. So we are right now integrated two clouds, um, Amazon and uh, the Oxford Cloud, uh, Rackspace, Azure, and IBM Smart Cloud. They're all on the way, basically. 
so now with these two clouds, you can actually integrate data and send data across with multiple clouds, get data, and uh, the interface looks the same. So we'll come to that. So all our differentiating factors, um, uh, very quickly, um, we are supporting multiple clouds, um, all in one console. Uh, you can just log into uh, for multiple clouds, uh, uh, do what we do with the normal cloud. All the interface looks the same. Uh, some terminology, terminology will change um, um, in, in different clouds, they call it different things, but the, the, the user interface looks the same, so you don't get confused with, uh, with things. Um, it's available as integrated all in one modular solution. So it's modular based. Uh, so you choose your cloud, pick your clouds, and say, I want uh, AE and C clouds, and uh, integrate those three clouds and give it your solution. So you find have one user interface, and we focus on all the four areas which cloud computing, cloud management has to actually focus on. That is, in brief, cloud management has to give you provisioning, configuration, ma uh, management, orchestration, and monitoring. These four are the main things. So uh, smart based cloud management aims to achieve all these four. Most process driven is based on wizards. It's uh, not too technical. Um, things, we try to make things as simple as possible. And we have dedicated staff, so engineers who can help you if you have any any difficulties. Uh, it's not very, uh, it's not, the size is not very technical. It's uh, cost effective as we have everything in one. We can bring down the cost a lot. So that's what a smart price cloud manager. Features and benefits, um, it's an all-in-one solution. So well, we have um, everything, in every all multi-cloud support. So we need not combine multiple products and get all the things together. So what we're trying to do is uh, get the best of breed together and make it as integrated one solution. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. Let me be very clear. We do not want to reinvent the wheel, trying to develop something new altogether. We will use the best of breed. There are beautiful solutions out of the market for different purposes. So we get these all together and stitched up together and say this is one solution. So uh, our focus is basically um, to manage the cloud. Uh, across multiple clouds, so manage all multiple clouds. So we take care of provisioning, configuration management, and orchestration. Um, you can set up network installations for provisioning, uh, configure applications, and uh, for configuration management, deploy uh, software across multiple uh, clouds, multiple instances, integrate deployments, and all changes are reported back. And we know what basically we have totally controlling everything. And we also have automation for all these tasks, and some uh, scripts are written down which does all this uh, scalable web architecture. Now, the scalable web architecture, what we showed you, so um, that's what Smart Price Cloud Manager is able to build. Um, so, we have also have monitoring, we have um, dedicated control. Um, the user interface is very intuitive, it's SaaS based, licensing is very flexible. Uh, APIs are available and it's based on standards. So we are not inventing some new standards there. So we are using the standard, cloud specific standards. We're working very closely with the Amazon, um, Rackspace, Azure, IBM, GoGrid, Terima, um, all these cloud providers also working very closely with uh, National Institute of Standards uh, to get, uh, to make sure that we follow correct standards when we do all this uh, cloud uh, uh, integration of uh, copying all these clouds together. Um, so, yeah. So, these are some of the screenshots. With lack of time, I cannot go through a demo. I will be going through um, another presentation uh, sometime after some uh, couple of uh, weeks um, and showing you an entire demo of Smart Price Cloud Manager. But for now, I just wanted to show you that we have uh, things up. Um, there's a base version uh, available. It's under uh, um, a private beta right now. We're testing it out. Um, these are some of the screenshots, as you can see, you have sign-ins, you have like uh, um, instances uh, which are there, you have scheduling, you have um, um, security groups being created. So these are some features which you will find as, uh, find in any cloud uh, uh, management console. So since we are not discussing too, too detailed in cloud management consoles, um, I'm not going to go into each of these screens, it will take a lot of time. So we can do all these things with Smart Price Cloud Manager. We also have intuitive graphs. Uh, you can see utilization reports, what's going on inside, configure, control everything. 
and uh, you have policy generators to actually generate policies. So, uh, so that's about uh, SmartPace Cloud Manager. The solution is um, will be available very brief uh, in the next uh, year, next quarter. The first uh, version will be available as a private beta. We'll be releasing it so for public uh, to use, for selected group of audience to use it and tell us how how the product is. Uh, we are right now testing it and adding some new features and and uh, uh, trying to get two uh, two clouds together basically right now to see how they perform, how they work together. Uh, um, so we'll be adding some some more features in the next coming coming months, uh, adding some more clouds as well. So what does ESL provide as Smart Price Cloud Services? So that was Smart Price Cloud Manager. It's one of our products. I highlighted down in this um, deck. Um, so we, we do that specific portion of the Smart Price Cloud Manager. In the cloud services, what do we do? So um, we we manage application migration. You see application integration, infrastructure, and management. These are the four areas we focus on. Um, um, in the applications, we do application migration. So very briefly, if you touch upon it, uh, we migrate your um, uh, existing applications to the cloud. So we take the application as is, say for example, a .NET application and move it straight to the cloud. Now, um, or a Java application or a PHP or, or any, any application, we migrate as is. Okay? So there are some questions which uh, some of our users ask, like what's the big deal that cloud is nothing but a virtual instance? You take the application from your copy there and it should run. Yes, you're right. But if the application has to be properly cloud enabled, uh, we need to do certain tweaks on the cloud. So, for example, data storage, you want to make sure that data is taken uh, and not on the SMRU storages. It has to be an elastic block, uh, block storages, which are uh, which will stay, reside there. SMRU storages get destroyed by the instance of sound. So we need to make sure that that takes place. There are a lot of things like that way. Backups, what when how many backups taken? How how do you scale your application? So all these things we need to take care of the cloud. So that's what we do. Smart Place Cloud Manager will be able to help us in many of these things. Application modernization, we take an application, we modernize it, we convert it. We have a different factors which does and only application modernization. So we take an old Firebird application, convert it into .NET, and from .NET we uh, move it on to the cloud, make the cloud enabled. So we do the whole nine years. So we have a Firebird application, you can have cloud enabled with .NET uh, from this service. So we migration to SAS, SAS, or we build new applications for SAS as well. So we take a old application and satisfy them. Um, so we build a layer of SAS around your existing applications, whether it's .NET or Java, on any platform. Intercloud migration, we migrate from one cloud from the cloud. Like, uh, sometimes all the, uh, you get started with a specific cloud and you want to migrate uh, data or you want to move your instances out from the cloud. We have a couple of our clients who, who are doing that right now. So uh, due to um, technical issues or technical limitations of the cloud, the cloud is just building. So we do the cloud migration as well. And cloud strategy consulting, we come in, we study our entire environment, we tell what applications can be. Uh, cloudified, what cannot be cloudified, we submit a proposal and let me explain to you uh, what, um, how, 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 the cloud, how to build a cloud strategy basically. For all you know, applications, some applications do not need to be cloudified. They do not need to be taken to the cloud. So we will help you with that and understanding that infrastructure environment and explain uh, to you. We do an assessment for that. So that's the cloud strategy consulting. In the integration side, we do cloud integration, um, connecting different applications on the cloud. You have different applications running on different clouds, some on the cloud, some on the private infrastructure, um, some on a data center, so some on your own company. So we do the cloud integration. We use CAST Iron uh, as, uh, as our product or number two to do that. Um, we have a very senior architect in CAST Iron who uh, was a former member of CAST Iron itself. So we do SaaS integration as well. So the integration side, so cloud integration also we do. So infrastructure side, we do public, private, and hybrid clouds. We work with VMware, we work with uh, uh, Cloud.com, OpenStack, uh, and Hubert Enterprise Cloud, that is Eucalyptus also. So we've done cloud, private cloud deployments itself. And uh, uh, cloud infrastructure deployments, we do server and desktop virtualization, um, is also one of our groups. Data center as a service, we provide that also as one of our services. 
backup disaster recovery and continuity services uh, is also one of the uh, things what we do. Um, I can go into detail each of them, but it will take us uh, quite some time to complete it. Uh, and in the management side, we do cloud-based managed services. Uh, we manage the entire infrastructure of the cloud. Uh, be it Rackspace or Amazon, Azure, any cloud, we do the entire management of the cloud. Um, using our products and tools, um, uh, we help you to um, reduce your time and sell and the cost of sell. The Smart Base Cloud Manager is one of the products which we use for that. And uh, these all come in the services component. So what our products cannot solve, certain things. So we, we have been having a dedicated engineer, a support staff, which will help you out to actually uh, uh, manage all this and take your queries. So we have the cloud partnerships with these, and that this is growing. Um, mm -hmm. uh, oh, forgot to put in rack space there. Actually, is also our partner. Uh, Amazon, even to your Oracle, Google App Engine, Opso, Salesforce, Azure, Stratfix, Brightscale, all of them are our partners. Um, um, Amazon and IBM, we are sharing, and, and, and you went to us canonically, we are sharing a very close partnership. Now, Oracle also, we have achieved a good partnership, and the Cloud also as well. Microsoft also is actually a very good partnership for us. So, in fact, we said most of them are very, um, uh, we have very senior partners there, um, either at the gold or platinum levels. So we have all access to their resources, uh, their, these, uh, um, the new technologies they work with as well. So industry recognition, smart price, cloud manager, um, uh, one, the NJTC, New Jersey Technology Council, school products competition, uh, one of the runner up there. Um, so we demonstrated the cloud product uh, and uh, we gave a presentation, we got this award. So these are some of the list, uh, the industry recognition I just wanted to share with you all that smart price cloud manager does exist and it does have some value. Uh, people have seen it. So that's it. And uh, I would like to uh, end this session. I think we already time up um, and open up the, for any questions from the audience. Thanks, Naveen. So q and session is open. So you can post your question on the chat window that's present on your right hand side of the screen. We have a couple of questions. So one is, how are management controls different from cloud management platform? Yeah, uh, that's actually a very good um, question. Mm, a cloud uh, management console is uh, uh, comes from the specific cloud vendor. Say, for example, AWS, they have their own management console. They give you those specific features that are specific to AWS console, and they are basic building blocks. So they are not the entire solution as such. So when you see this web scalable web architecture, what I showed you, uh, let us see if you want to implement that in, uh, in AWS console. You can do that, but there's a lot of amount of work, and there's a lot of amount of scripting, there's a lot of amount of stitching, which, which we need to do, do to get it to, get to that stage. So they give you resources to do it. They give you the building blocks, they give you the APIs. Now you build a solution around it. That's where cloud management uh, solutions and platforms come in. The cloud management and solutions, they leverage the existing cloud APIs and build a solution over that. So to make it very simple, a cloud um, management console from the specific vendor is, a, is just a building block. It's just a starting stage to make you aware of the cloud and use the cloud. And a cloud management solution encompasses this cloud uh, console uses the APIs and builds solutions around it. So for example, in the Amazon's console, let us go back. Uh, if you have to build a solution, say it will take you uh, say 10 days. But if you use Smart Price Cloud Manager with our automated scripting and all our uh, integration, it might happen in two days time. So that's where you save a lot of time. So I hope that answers the question. One more question is coming. So um, you mentioned about scalable web architecture. Uh, does the SEM manage the entire environment? How does it work? Please yeah, yeah. Okay, that's a very good question, actually. I said, yeah, 20, uh, uh, it's like two days' time, yes. Um, out of this scalable web architecture, SEM will actually um, uh, um, do most of the activities, which, which I listed down in one of the slides there. Uh, so, if you go back uh, to Yeah, so some of these tasks to be performed, 
most of these tasks, SDM will, will perform automatically where it is uh, required, where it can be automated. Now, uh, there is some amount of manual intervention. There is a service engineer which checks because uh, SDM also is an application with the software is run. So we need to even monitor and manage SDM itself. So there is a service engineer which comes up and checks uh, at regular intervals, like backups and restores, where the backups and restores happen regularly, if any, anything goes wrong, anything is going wrong with the site, if, um, uh, if you know, scaling is working properly, if provisioning happens well, and, uh, you know, general system maintenance. The, the engineer or support staff will not be majorly involved in all these tasks because everything, most of them are automated, most of them are automated, and he'll also be monitoring the bills and meetings, et cetera, hooks. So all these things, there will be just skills and has a look at it. And if you want any extra things apart from what has been set up, you know, the engineer comes and just does uh, housekeeping activities. So um, uh, I would say that um, in this two days period when we set up this whole infrastructure and environment, in a month probably uh, the engineer would spend or the support staff would at least uh, would spend at least an, uh, more not more than an hour or two to actually just make sure things are working properly. But if it had been a normal console without all these uh, SEM, without SEM, he would have had to spend at least like 10 to 15 hours in a month to manage this whole uh, console and serve the customer's need. Um, so, he can, and if any new services are requested by the customer, the service engineer would have to use SDM to actually provision or, you know, uh, do whatever it takes on the, on the console. So, I can say there's a lot of difference when we, when we uh, use SDM and when we when you not use SDM. That's great. So, for any additional questions, please email us at info at zslinc.com or call us at 732-549-9770. Thank you again for joining us for this webinar. So the webinar recording will be posted at ZSL's TV page and we'll be sharing up over the email as well. So thanks again. Thank you.